Uh, very good morning, everyone. Uh, I hope all of you are doing well. So, I would like to thank by uh, sorry, I would like to start by uh, thanking uh, Dr. Nimai. Uh, we have been communicating back and forth to uh, materialize this session. It's been uh, long pending uh, for one reason or another. And to make it a bit more engaging and uh, interesting, I, I would say, uh, this year, uh, you know, uh, contrary to conventional uh, pedagogy, I, I came up with this uh, title, so hopefully it will be interesting. Uh, and uh, also I'll be able to translate the language that I uh, intend to. So I'm going to share my screen. <clears throat> uh, do let me know by yes and no if my screen is visible, OK? Because there is no way I would be able to. Yes. OK. <clears throat> so before. Uh, I start, uh, let me give you a bit of uh, prelude so that uh, we, uh, we all can connect the dots, uh, how this uh, topic came into existence. So back in uh, 2000, uh, when I was doing a review of, uh, of a thesis uh, repository that all of you know called uh, Shodganga. Uh, all of you know that that's a repository wherein all your theses and dissertations are uh, reposited uh, and readily available for your reference, uh, except IITs and IIMs. Uh, they don't uh, put their theses there for uh, their XYZ reason. Uh, but other than that, uh, all the universities, be it uh, state or central, uh, you find uh, their theses and dissertation and few other uh, resource categories which are indexed mm. and uh, I did a lot of I did a study on that uh, a qualitative study rather uh, looking at uh, various theses and dissertations and uh, the conclusion that I came up with uh, from uh, my research or my study uh, the topic that you are uh, looking at is a uh, you can say derivative of that uh, learning. And uh, yeah, so that's how it uh, came to be. I think this is the second time I'm uh, uh, translating this. Usually, uh, again, as I said, uh, I go for, I mean, uh, I asked, not asked, actually, I gave uh, uh, Sir both the options to choose from. Uh, because uh, this is a topic I don't think that everyone is comfortable to talk about uh, because of certain reason. So I gave him uh, uh, both the options uh, to go by the conventional uh, pedagogy or, you know, doing something different. So he chose uh, this one. And hopefully uh, all of you would enjoy it uh, and also... Uh, be able to uh, get the message. So to uh, begin with, uh, I would assume that many of you are there uh, who are doing your thesis work or maybe uh, doing your dissertation at University of uh, Vishwarthi. Uh, and if you are not a scholar, if you are a faculty, still the principle is uh, applicable. It doesn't matter. Uh, not necessarily it is only restricted to the thesis work. Uh, even if you are uh, composing a paper, you know, writing a paper, uh, the principle of this is still applicable. Now, to start with uh, the lexicon, all of you might be wondering, uh, what is this uh, Tanduri Momo? So, uh, uh, I do not know if the audience can uh, speak, uh, but anybody can, uh, is it possible uh, for them to engage or is it uh, mute on their side? 
Uh, can I ask a question and can they answer, please, sir? Please, please, please. please, please proceed. Manoj. Okay, 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 great. Uh, so, can anyone uh, give me a rough estimation? What is uh, tandoori momo? Uh, what is this uh, dish? Uh, many of you probably uh, have heard about it and uh, many of you, I believe, even ate it <laughs> in one place or another. So, uh, anyone has any rough estimation? Uh, what is this dish? No. Yeah. Yes, yes, it is for Tomori and Momo. He is asking about what is the estimated cost like that. Approx. Actually, loss is as a yeah, excellent Okay, but uh, uh, how it came into, into existence? Any thought on that? As usual, uh, the way we see more does not look like in that. It was supposed to be tea, but it is tea. Yes. It cannot be uh, distinguished between steamed and uh, fried. Neither it is steamed nor no, it is fried. All right. Okay. So, uh, without any uh, riddle, let me just uh, give you uh, how it, it you know, uh, came into existence. So, the word uh, tandoori, uh, if you know a tandoori dish, probably you know that it came from uh, Mediterranean uh, region, which is like current days, you have Saudi, the Qatar, Kuwait, and many other Middle Eastern countries are there. And the word, uh, the origin, if you uh, refer to its etymology, you come up with a, 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 a phenotype, something like uh, tanur, which is a main clay pot, a pot which is made of clay. Even we have that uh, here. And uh, since the Bedouin tribes in Middle Eastern, they were back then known for their, uh, you know, traveling from one place to another, and they would be carrying a lot of utensils because it, they definitely they have to cook and eat. And uh, this sort of piracy was very rampant. So what people would be doing, they would be carrying this uh, clay pot because nobody would like to rob a clay pot, right? Uh, <clears throat> and they would be using these uh, clay pots for uh, cooking. Even these days also, uh, the traditional, most of the tandoori dishes are cooked in, uh, in utensils which are made of uh, clay. Now, Momo, all of you know, it's a, a primary, uh, so uh, it's a primary dish, you can say, of Nepal. Uh, China even has, but it's slightly different. I think they call it dumpling. Uh, but predominant, uh, I mean, Momo is very uh, prevalent if you go to uh, Nepal uh, or that side for that matter. Now, what you have is that uh, this tandoori Momo is a culinary method that's taken from, uh, you know, a land that's very different uh, than the dish itself. And what has happened over a period of time is that uh, someone uh, thought maybe for sake of experiment or maybe for the sake of test enhancement, you know, uh, blending these uh, two different, uh, seemingly two different approaches and uh, came up with uh, this dish that now we call tandoori momo. Now, one thing that is certain from it that it's not an original dish because the culinary method comes from a different region and the dish comes from a different region. What we have done is simply we have adopted a different uh, approach. So there is nothing new actually uh, if you uh, look at uh, the dish itself other than its you know uh, various uh, textures and all that. Uh, but you can say it's a derivation of 
uh, seemingly two different approaches. Now, how does it relate to your thesis? Uh, that's the, I think, the question that you, will, you are pondering uh, at this moment. Now, in order to again uh, connect the dots, you have to kind of uh, at the, in an objective manner. So the thesis or uh, you know, your dissertation uh, that is part of that we call the research project that you have ventured upon. Uh, what is the research or for that purpose, what is the objective of your research? Now, depending on your stream or your domain, whether it's basic science or social science, uh, the objective will, you know, probably give you various uh, different phrases, maybe to solve a problem or maybe to, you know, uh, uh, propose a fresh or uh, different perspective. Uh, if you're engineering, then it will probably uh, to innovate something, uh, a new product, uh, or maybe uh, uh, to come up with uh, new factual information, uh, whatever uh, that might be, that proposition. But uh, one element that is, um, again, uh, that permeates all these uh, various elements, that's the novelty component that you all are obligated uh, or bound if you are doing a research uh, to bring something new. Right. So if that's the objective and if that is the, uh, you know, and if you look at the thesis, the manifestation of that project, uh, then you need, need to uh, look at your uh, paper in a slightly different than uh, the way usually you view it. Usually uh, when we talk about PhD, the common, you know, uh, quote unquote, uh, the mindset is, you know, you get a PhD and you get to uh, prefix uh, DR before your name, which is certainly gives you a lot of prestige, uh, you know, and helps you to further your career, uh, both, uh, you know, uh, psychological and social, uh, financial. Uh, but uh, when we look at you uh, from a social entity, we have certainly a different expectation. And that expectation is that uh, your research uh, will help us in, uh, in a ways uh, that, you know, make probably our life easier, much more uh, sustainable, um, in a much more mo uh, positive and meaningful manner. So now I'm going to uh, give you uh, an overall, you know, how you can kind of do that, how you can uh, when you think of this uh, Momo uh, principle and when you look at a project. Uh, so this is a thesis, a very uh, fairly recent publication. It is available in uh, Sodh uh, Ganga. You can uh, go ahead and read it. I've taken social science because uh, that's my uh, background. I won't be able to uh, get into much physics and mathematics. Uh, but saying social uh, science is something that I think touches all of us, so uh, all of us can understand. So I, I don't think there will be any problem with that. Now, this is a paper uh, titled uh, Social Intelligence, Spiritual Intelligence, and Study of Values Among College Students. Now, if you uh, read this paper, uh, you know, uh, the uh, conclusion is not really necessary in this case uh, because uh, what you need need to is overall the framework of your uh, study because it's highly unlikely that in the conclusion uh, you will find something uh, new in your study. I'll tell you why uh, in probably uh, next slide. Now, when you uh, break uh, a thesis or dissertation, it has certain components, right? So starting with, uh, it will have certain sampling uh, depending on the uh, a paper uh, uh, that will be a, a variable component uh, sampling. Uh, there will be a certain methodology that probably you would have adopted uh, for uh, furtherance of your uh, study. 
uh, you have certain hypotheses that probably you started with, like in this in this case, it is like uh, social intelligence and spiritual intelligence and how uh, all these uh, correlate with uh, certain values uh, in college students. Uh, you probably, if you're in social science, uh, psychology or maybe anthropology, you will have certain questionnaire uh, that you have prepared. And then at the end, you have certain interpretation now, <clears throat> all these things uh, that you have, and you can always, you know, ask that novelty question, uh, starting with, uh, let's uh, say, that hypothesis that you have created or you have thought probably when you constructed your thesis project, uh, whether if there is any uh, novelty. Now, again, as I said, it is highly uh, unlikely. Uh, that you can formulate a hypothesis at the very beginning uh, that will be uh, radically different. Uh, uh, then comes the methodology. Are you adopting to a new methodology, something completely new, something that uh, if, it is, if the answer is yes, uh, then definitely uh, you have a novelty component. If the answer is no, if the methodology that you are uh, applying uh, uh, the uh, statistical, uh, whether it is analytical or qualitative, uh, if there is any uh, novelty, then again, yes, you have certain novelty. If it is no, if you are using the uh, already established, let's say, some uh, t-test or the NOVA test, whatever that statistical, uh, then you already know that you are using a methodology that is already there. Uh, questionnaires is, uh, again, a very key component when it comes to social science researches, uh, whether you are in management, anthropology, sociology, psychology, and all that. Uh, a question uh, can be formulated, the questionnaire that you are using for your uh, thesis or dissertation, uh, is it, again, a ready-made questionnaire, or is it a questionnaire that you have prepared uh, after some testing done? And again, uh, often you will find the answer is uh, no. The, usually what I have seen in uh, scholars, they will use a ready-made questionnaire that have already been there in academia for quite some time or it was you know, uh, developed by some other uh, scholars. And then the interpretation, which again commonly remains the very same. So uh, when you again uh, break it down to various uh, parts of your uh, of your uh, paper and you look at all these various elements of the components, you can always ask uh, this uh, novelty element if there is any novelty in any of those, uh, you know, elements. And if the answer is uh, no in most of the cases, then you know that eventually you will come, you will cook something similar to, you know, Tandoori Momo where uh, you will be just, you know, uh, doing uh, mushing up two different things or maybe blending or uh, doing some sort of amalgamation uh, and trying to put something fancy in, in front of us. I'll give you one quick example. Like if you look at the term spiritual intelligence. Uh, now, this since this study was done in this part of the land, the eastern part, uh, uh, and when you talk about also the value, the spirit, uh, the intelligence part is a very Western notion. Okay, uh, the study on intelligence uh, started back in uh, 1400 or 1500. There are many prominent names, uh, you know, uh, and they were using this intelligence as a tool for racial discrimination and all that. If you go back to read the black history and all that, uh, you come up with many wonderful articles on this sort of things. And uh, when you talk about the spiritual intelligence, so you have something that is, uh, I mean, amalgamation of uh, Western, uh, you can say, uh, narrative and then the spirituality or the spiritualness is a very much uh, Eastern narrative. Now, uh, the problem with this particular approach is this. Uh, intelligence and spirituality, they won't coexist together. You cannot uh, put them uh, in the same uh, sentence or phrase because they are very different. Uh, if you ask the question, how is it so? Uh, intelligence is an objective phenomenon. So there is a way I can understand uh, your intelligence. And then there are varied degree of intelligence. So you have musical intelligence. You have 
though musical uh, is a creativity uh, uh, people use them interchangeably but then i have a different notion on that one but keeping the aside again it's an objective so you have mathematical intelligence right uh, uh, but if you talk about uh, spirituality that's very uh, subjective uh, it's not an objective phenomena if you talk about you are in a spiritual person different individual look at uh, spirituality or the religion in different uh, ways uh, so it has uh, nothing to do with human intelligence it's more has to do with your inner being your uh, soul uh, you as an individual uh, but anyway uh, th so the uh, though that is that was slightly digress uh, from the topic itself uh, but anyway you understand uh, what I'm trying to say so this is a very common uh, practice that all of you can do uh, in your thesis and uh, try to at least you know uh, answer those questions in a, a positive and in an honest manner uh, you look at all these various uh, components of your project and see uh, if there is anything uh, that is uh, novel, if there is anything uh, new uh, in any of those uh, elements. You can do that. I'll show you how you can uh, do that. Uh, there is a way, actually, way it is possi possible to measure it. Now, how will you measure it? Uh, the answer lies with... Uh, you know, a very well-known uh, scholar's work. Uh, he's a you know, philosopher of technology named uh, Thomas Kuhn. And this is a very uh, renowned book that uh, I would highly recommend that all of you please read at least once. Uh, if, you re if you're really serious about a uh, research career, uh, I would highly recommend that uh, you read this book at least once. Uh, try and understand uh, his message. I think it will... Uh, have a great uh, impact on your perception towards uh, this whole uh, research, uh, you know, uh, venture, let's say. Now, uh, just to give you in a nutshell or in a kind of a summary manner, uh, 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 what uh, Kuhn is uh, trying to do or he was trying to do is he was trying to understand the uh, you know, scientific revolution, how it works, how it happens, uh, and various uh, factors that are associated with uh, scientific uh, revolution, like the economic aspect, the commercial, the crisis aspect, so on and so forth. Now, what he did is he used this particular the paradigm, and there is one other concept that he uses, normal science. So what is this normal science, and how does it relate to your project? Now, what he usually says uh, out of many things that a paradigm shift research is something that always creates a new path. What it, what it simply means that again, it's again uh, similar to the concept of uh, that novelty. Uh, but what he is saying that it will completely create a different branch uh, where, again, you will see uh, many other researches would follow subsequent to your research work. So if you have done something that is, uh, uh, that is really impactful, if it has certain impact, uh, like, for example, I can give you a very recent uh, subject, like you call uh, behavioral economics. Okay, which is, uh, there was a guy, I think I forgot his name, got Nobel. I think Richard Thaler, uh, who is also known as the father of behavioral economics, which is a kind of a very uh, new approach to economics and, uh, you know, uh, in uh, coexistence with human psychology. So uh, when you do something similar to uh, that in principle, uh, paradigm shifting uh, research, you know, a whole new different branch emerged from there and then many subsequent research will follow. And those subsequent research uh, that follows from that paradigm shifting work is called normal science. Now, when you, most of your uh, research, uh, I, when I say your, I don't necessarily mean your, but most of the papers that I have read, uh, 
they actually uh, fall within this, if you look at in a Venn diagram uh, model, uh, I mean, follow this uh, normal signs, uh, uh, which is the secondary to the paradigm shift. So that means they're basically following a certain model that is well established, uh, well, you know, uh, let's say, uh, uh, accepted or tested uh, model. And all uh, in normal science, what people are doing is uh, just playing with uh, different components, different elements, and just uh, giving their, uh, you know, uh, own uh, shape, uh, which uh, eventually uh, don't give any anything uh, new actually uh, from that. The result will always be something that you can always put within that paradigm, that uh, scientific revolution that uh, succeeded. So, uh, again, if you have some time, please uh, go ahead and uh, read the book. I think you will get a uh, much uh, broader understanding of uh, what Kuhn was trying to uh, propose, uh, or rather, uh, what message he was trying to convey. Now, so I have talked about a lot of uh, issues, I think, um, a lot of things to think about, but then uh, I also thought I'll propose a tentative solution that uh, I think uh, might help you to, I know, lead to from doing this normal science, then doing something that at least probably uh, help you to create a framework uh, that will uh, be part of that paradigm shifting uh, research. Okay. Now, the way you do that, uh, you need to choose the right path. Okay. Now, uh, all of you know that there are two common methods. You have the inductive approach, you have deductive approach, uh, which are commonly adopted by researchers or uh, authors or the scholars for their research or for their paper uh, writing. Now, I have something third, I'll talk about uh, these two, and then also I'll talk about the one that I think uh, is uh, much more constru constructive, okay, something that all of, you, all of you can reflect upon. So uh, let's first look at the common approaches uh, that all of us are familiar with, and I'll tell you their pros and cons, okay. So the first uh, common approach that 95% of the scholars adopt is called the deductive model. What is the deductive model? So, uh, and even it is the UGC norm, so I know this is not something that you can do. So when you get into your uh, thesis project, usually you need to submit your uh, project, right? You need to tell them what is exactly your. So it's not the research that, that is very much happening, but you need to tell them, okay, so uh, you are going to work on something like this one, e-learning experience among college students, okay? Now, what is the problem? Now, this deductive approach, if you know how it is, uh, how it proceeds, then you know that you have a tentative theory or maybe an hypothesis. And uh, from there, what is the common tradition is that you go into various databases, you... Uh, you know, look for some similar papers uh, that are similar to this. And then, you know, you go for sampling the questionnaire and all that and then confirmation of your original theory. And what happens as a result of that, you come up with a conclusion that we already know. For example, one example is e-learning platforms have significantly improved students' digital literacy and technical skill. Uh, now, is there anything unusual about that conclusion? Definitely no. Why? Because uh, if it is e-learning you were talking about, the digital literacy and e-learning, uh, it's just learning and then you were talking about something objective. So uh, they are part of the same spectrum. It's not as if they are different. If somebody who is not thorough about e-learning and the e-learning platform and modes and everything, uh, the digital literacy there or any kind of uh, e-platform uh, then definitely the digital literacy will be less in there, right? So it's not like you can have one or the other. And 
then again the technical skill follows. Another conclusion is the ability to access course materials, uh, etc., etc., help accommodate diverse schedules and learning place spaces. Again, uh, the entire uh, foundation of e-learning is based on uh, this principle that you know uh, global university. So it, it doesn't matter, you know, it's not like 1940 or 50 or maybe uh, even prior to that, like whatever is happening in developed nation, uh, we come to know after many, many years. Now, whatever happens there, we get to know simultaneously, whatever the development that is, because it has now become with the help of internet and all that, now it's pretty much a global university, right? So if you follow this, uh, uh, deductive approach or method, eventually you come up with something that we already know. The contrary to this is something called inductive approach. Now many scholars or many uh, faculties I have seen who promote this and uh, the usual method is that you start with an observation and then pattern recognition and all that and then theory testing. But the problem is uh, when you say the observation, now the observation is a big model. Okay, I mean, it's not a very constructive one and you have a lot of confusion there, like how do you start the observation and how uh, do you, uh, how do you proceed? Now, I have a solution to that. I have, uh, you know, uh, what I'm proposing is rather a different one. Just a second. Uh, I'm proposing a different uh, approach altogether. What I call this, you know, if you remember uh, the question mark, the mystery approach is I call deconstructive approach. Now this is much more constructive and uh, you have certain uh, elements to go about. Now, how do you do it? If you take the same approach that e-learning uh, experience among college students, so you break it down. So you have e learning, which is talking about the technology component. Uh, then you have the learning. Now there are two learning that H learning, H human learning in general with a capital L. And then you have learning uh, specific to learning, let's say in schools and colleges and all that. So there are two different uh, learnings that I'm referring to. And then you have another word, experience, uh, human experience. There is a separate branch called phenomenology. Uh, anybody studying phil uh, philosophy will know that. Uh, uh, Martin Heidegger uh, is a very well-known individual. When you, you know, he's, I think, known as also father of uh, phenomenology, something like that. Uh, but anyway, uh, when you deconstruct it, uh, uh, this is something. Anyway, if you read uh, Jacques Derrida, you, you can find again a much more detail uh, what he talks about. Uh, he actually uh, is formulated this approach. Uh, so anyway, now when you take this uh, deconstructive uh, approach, you have certain components to work with, which then you can put into the, you know, uh, I would say in the, uh, in this uh, mold of inductive approach, and then you can proceed. So it will not be entirely deductive approach, but then it will be followed by inductive approach. The did, uh, deductive approach basically will give you the framework within which uh, you ought to uh, function. Because now it's because here when it says that observation, what is it exactly that you are going to up, uh, I mean up, uh, observe, right? So the answer will lie in the deconstructive approach. You can start with. Uh, technology, you can look at its uh, genealogy or its uh, anthropology, and uh, from there you can move forward. How you are going to connect technology with human experience and the learning, that is entirely subjective, and there is no platform in the universe uh, that can tell you exactly how you can do that, because it will always be unique to you, it will be unique to, if I do it, it will be unique to uh, me. And uh, again, uh, if you think that chat GPT can help you, uh, which is uh, something again, gaining a lot of uh, reputation uh, among scholars, uh, then I will say uh, you are highly mistaken. You know, uh, if you are not sure, uh, how is that? Uh, just think of calculator. Uh, certainly calculator is a great tool to use. Uh, 
but it doesn't make you smart rather it makes you dumb so there you have the answer uh, for the chat gpt uh, now how do we know that you are on the right track but this is something not uh, today uh, tomorrow but eventually we will know when we uh, look at your uh, citation record uh, just for your reference i'll tell you uh, the global benchmark if you are doing a if you are a very good scholar your citation will be above 1 lakh uh, if you are doing a decent job it will range from 35 to let's say 40 uh, but uh, let me tell you a surprising fact 99% uh, of our scholars in India do not even reach the 10,000 marks. Forget about that uh, 40, 50 or 1 lakh. They don't even cross 10,000. If you, uh, I can show you that, you can just simply, there is a very easy thing you can do. How will you do it? You just go to Google Scholar, take in university and put their name and you can check. Like this is I am Kolkata, you can see. Uh, the citation starts from 2,929. You can go to, let's say, maybe IIT Kharagpur. Just wait for a few seconds. And you can see. Uh, 31,000 it starts from. And then 20, 26, uh, first few. And then after that, you can see how drastically it falls. Right. So even getting to that, I mean, they have many faculties, right? I do not know exactly how many faculties, but you can see how many have still, I mean, barely managed to get that uh, 30, between 30 to 40,000 rank. So 99%, as I said, do not even get beyond that 10,000. Now, uh, hopefully, uh, you got the idea. Uh, if you look at the uh, end result, okay, uh, think of the long term uh, goal. Uh, make sure that you have taken the right approach and you are on the right track. Otherwise, you know, throughout your research uh, journey, uh, this publication journey, you will be cooking just one form of uh, maybe you will not cook tandoori momo but you will cook chocolate momo I, I don't know if you visit delhi you know you will find it so what they basically do they take the momo and then instead of putting the vegetables they put chocolate which is again uh, something uh, seemingly new okay but then you get the idea right so uh, from there now uh, i'll take you to the new JGate platform, okay. Uh, in the past, we were using uh, JGate Plus, but now we have changed to uh, JGate Next. It's a consortia database. So, what do I mean by database? Uh, it has got both uh, uh, science, arts, commerce, all the branches, uh, you know, their resources, their various publication. Uh, in a single bucket. And what is the benefit of it? That is what I'm going to tell you in a brief, okay? Why database is important. Sorry. Uh, by the way, one uh, more piece of information. Why is it showing... Uh, e-resources in agriculture. I think they have got agriculture and I think they sent me the wrong credentials, not the university, uh, but the consortia one. Uh, let me just check once, okay? Just give me a few seconds. It doesn't matter, but because, you know, the principle will still remain the same or I'll just show you uh, my own uh, platform. Let me just wait for a few seconds. Yeah, I think they gave me the wrong one. This is uh, Vishwabharati has got a separate branch, which is uh, that is not coming under Ishod Sindhu, but it is coming under ICR. And I think they shared that wrong credential. Anyway, let me just show you the one that I have. Uh, by the way, 
uh, what I was trying to say is this. Uh, in the past, we did not have any uh, mobile application, but now there is a mobile application that if you want, you can uh, download uh, from the Play Store or uh, iOS. Uh, why it says invalid user then? Okay, that's why. Okay, so this is the new interface uh, that you will experience. Uh, it's better, it's a bit faster. Uh, this one has got lot many articles. Let me just show you quickly. So this is the interface. You have search builder, which is advanced search, author finder, journal finder. These are various uh, type of resources. Uh, this is your subject classification. Okay. Uh, but I'm going to show you specifically. Uh, Andruji, yeah. Andruji, please show the added feature, which added sure. a new feature. Yes, yes. In this, in this new platform. Sure, sure, sir. So uh, let me start with the journal finder. Okay. Now, when you go to the journal finder, uh, what it, it does is it gives you the list of all the journals that are there in uh, JGate. Okay. Now, just wait for a few seconds. It will actually give me the complete list. Uh, it should not be doing this. Uh, just give me a minute, okay? Let me just check if the platform is uh, down or something like that. Just give me a few seconds. Yeah, it seems like maybe something is, uh, the server is down or what I am not quite sure. It was working in the morning. Okay, let me just try this one. Or maybe it's my internet connection. Meanwhile, if anyone has any question, they can ask while I'm trying to sort out uh, this glitch. Okay, um, let me see if I have some other credentials. Okay, somebody is saying try in incognito mode.
Okay, um, I have found a solution. So let me now reshare my screen. Is it visible, uh, sir? Yes, sir, yes. Okay. Uh, now, our first major change that has happened uh, in JGate Next, that's the number of articles that we uh, that JGate used to cover in the, I think it was around 50,000. Now it is 59,000 and it will cross 1 lakh uh, in next one or two months. Okay, we are already have done. Uh, we just need to uh, make few changes and it will be more than 1 lakh titles. It will be there. These are mostly peer reviewed uh, titles. Okay. Uh, second change that we have done in this platform, that is the subject classification. So uh, in the past, they were all scattered, but now they are very, uh, you can say, classified, classified in a tabular format. So if you click on social science, all the social science uh, common uh, streams or domains are there. If you click on engineering, it will be again. Uh, so this is uh, another change. Uh, one more change is the source index. Now, this will be very helpful for uh, uh, publication. When you click on source index, what you see is that uh, the Scopus listing, the UGC care listing, the Web of Science listing, and all that. Now, uh, as you all know that UGC has a, a stipulation that is uh, your publication has to be in a UGC care listed journals or if it is better if it is Scopus listed and all that. Now, uh, from JGate, you can easily uh, extract that list. How? Let me give you a quick demonstration. So I'm from social science. OK, I need to go to, let's say, social science. And I'm from uh, sociology. OK, now you click on apply filter. Now, out of 89, now you see you have only 4,000 titles listed. OK. Now, what do you do is you go to source index, you click on Scopus, that is 1,552 titles. If you want to check UGC care, well, you click on Scopus listing and apply filter. Now you have all the Scopus listed titles, 1,552. Now, this is something that you can navigate and you can come up with, uh, I would say, the list of potential uh, titles probably where uh, you can publish your papers. It has open access listing and also uh, the red mark, the red one, we don't have any subscription. The green one is an indication that we have access to it. Okay, so this is something that is uh, new in this uh, uh, next JGate next portal. Uh, remaining publisher packages in the past also we had and uh, still we have. Now, let me show you the change that has happened uh, at the front. At the front also, you have something called search, but this was already there actually. Uh, another new component that you have is the preprint. Uh, in the previous JGate, uh, there was no option for preprint. If you are a basic science student, uh -huh. Uh, sorry, anyone uh, having any question? Uh, I was hearing something, but I didn't. Okay. okay. So uh, in the past, uh, there was no preprint option, but now preprint uh, journals are also there. Uh, something if you are from basic science, uh, mathematics, physics, chemistry, and all. Uh, I'm sure it will be uh, useful. Now, let me show you a few more changes. Sorry. A searching method, all of you, I hope you remember, you have to search based on keywords. Okay, do not use Google search, it will not work. Now, Yes. Uh, at the very front, the major change that you can see now you don't have to open the full article in order to check whether it is open access 
or whether it is green or red, you have it marked here. The citation and all these things previously was also there. Uh, they are still there, but the uh, indication whether you can download the full text or not, uh, the indicator is right at the beginning. If you want to read the abstract and everything, you can do that. Okay. Uh, let me show you a few more changes. These are actually university. Yeah. Uh, now you also have DUI search option. In the past, there was no DUI search option. Orc ID is something that we also we have started uh, incorporating. So authors, if you know what is Orc ID, uh, then uh, you know how it is used. Uh, Orc IDs will also be mentioned, but then it will depend on, uh, I would say, uh, document type. Okay, if I just go for let's say journal article. Yeah, if the ORC ID is there, it will be mentioned right beside the name of the author. Okay. So these authors, yeah, like for example, this author, you can see the uh, ID is there. You can access it. Uh, citation, you have also started uh, incorporating, but this citation, they're coming from a different platform called uh, Smart Citation. Uh, let me see if I can show you one. Uh, but then I need to find one paper that has been cited. Otherwise, it will not be there. Mm, let me try with best match. Okay. Uh, this one hasn't been cited. No citation. No, it hasn't been cited yet. Anyway, uh, we'll check that later on if I can. Uh, find one or a paper that has been cited, then I'll uh, probably, use. I could have shown you how the new citation is. Okay, this one, uh, there is one. Uh, if you are looking at the screen, see how what it says, 17 citing publication, two supporting, three mentioning, and zero contrasting. This is entirely different concept of citation. Uh, supporting citation means, if you understand, that means your paper, uh, you know, uh, the citing individual, what he's trying to say is that, okay, whatever the finding that or conclusion that you have reached, I have also reached at the same conclusion or maybe working in the same direction. Uh, mentioning means only he's just mentioning using your paper as a reference. And contrasting citation means uh, your finding and my finding, they are different. So if you want, you can explore this, okay? Though you will, I mean, you won't be able to use the, all the content, uh, but you can do a free registration. It will look, it looks something like this. And you can explore it. I mean, uh, conceptually, uh, I'm sure it will give you, uh, you know, new territory to explore. Uh, all of you know about citation, the uh, Scopus and Web of Science, but uh, this is a very different concept, actually. They are using uh, this machine learning uh, and AI, uh, LLM, basically, uh, in order to identify this uh, context of citation, okay? So uh, do explore. It's called uh, this one, cite.ai. If you have any question, uh, you can reach out to, uh, you know, library department. Uh, we'll you know, give you some more details on this one. Uh, and a uh, few other changes. Uh, these are some different indicators that we have started, like open access, retracted articles, data set. Uh, Institution-wise, you can also now find, you can see Stanford University, Harvard University. Uh, in the past, we did not have these things. So uh, now uh, these are uh, new filters that we have added and uh, uh, sure it will help you. Now, 
I think I have already taken one hour. Do I have a few more uh, minutes or shall I uh, give the stage back to the audience for question and answer? Uh, you, you may continue. Mr. Sarkar, you may continue. Okay. Uh, anyway, I'll not take uh, much more time. I'll just take two, three minutes. Uh, uh, regarding the deconstructive approach that I told you, okay, if you remember the topic on which I was uh, that I was uh, using to uh, talk about, uh, let me just show you how uh, JGate helps actually in that uh, manner, okay. Now, if you take the deconstructive and think of the first uh, element, which is the technology, what is the first thing that you need to know for your research? First, you need to know in which all avenues people have done research with or maybe in relation to technology? That's the first question uh, that, he, uh, that needs to be answered okay, for you. Now, how JGET helps is very simple. You go to advanced search, you select title and keyword, and you take your first component, which is technology, right? Now, Technology. Sorry. Can you give their uh, history of art? History or of art history. history of art or art history? Uh, I can. I can. I'll give you, sir. I'll. Uh, but then, uh, anyway, uh, let me just uh, finish this one, and then I'll give you the uh, history of art. How you can exploit that one? So you just have one particular uh, keyword, which is technology. And select title and keyword. Don't select title, keyword, and abstract. If you do abstract, you will get a whole lot of articles. Uh, not needed. Now you click on search. Now see what it will do is, it will give you the data in a very tabular manner. Okay, how it does that. So you go to the subject. Once you click on subject, now here you have the complete distribution on technology. Uh, if you remember what I was mentioning, uh, this aspect. See, uh, when you look at uh, technology, mostly you will be probably looking at education and career, right? You understand how why biotechnology is there because many a research has happened in that direction. Civil engineering, these are obvious domain. So you have to understand this uh, usualness and unusualness. When you look at technology and also when you see philosophy, usually you don't think they go hand in hand, right? So if you understand this classification and if you try and understand that how come technology is coming into history or it is coming into literature for that matter? When you explore this section, that is what will give you that different approach, that novelty element. If you again work with that uh, generic paradigm that is already there, uh, you will simply just go into education and career, or if it, you are in management, you will go into management, you will look for one or the other paper, you will look into the references, you'll copy paste, and your job is pretty much done there. All that will be left with that statistics, you know, tabulation, the data, putting data into that and getting the result and interpretation. But the problem is you will end up with that generic science that we mentioned about. You will come up with a conclusion that already makes sense or we already know it in one way or other. Maybe the land, you are proposing a slightly different language, but uh, we understand or we know it. So this is how you can start. You can take any subject for that matter. There are many other filters that you all can use. Okay. Now, sir was talking about the history of art. So, uh, and you can click on search. You can also try by best match. If you do the best match, then it will. It's not start from uh, semiology in the teaching of history of art, some speculation concerning such and such reflections, 
or history of arts as a poor relative of the science of art history. Of, so now you get the idea how you can go about. See, uh, usually the data will always be based on publication date. Okay. Uh, so if you want to uh, explore as per the date of publication, then it's fine. Or you can always go by this uh, year option, filter option. Okay, maybe you can start with 1950. So you can see what kind of papers that were published in the past or the kind of work that happened in the past and then how it evolved from there. So uh, since most of the titles that you have, they're fairly stable, they're peer reviewed. So you can rely on the uh, quality of the papers uh, that are indexed. Uh, this may not be everything, but the benefit of JGate is that it is, it is, you know, it has, it's not like a Google Scholar, you know, like it will throw you the complete ocean and ask you to, okay, you swim. Uh, in JGate, it's very confined, it's very structured, in a very constructive manner, you have the data. So you can, you know, uh, go back and forth and navigate. So without getting, you know, a lot of information frustration that I call, uh, that we all have. Uh, this, these days. So I think, uh, okay, you also have a bunch of analytics. You can use them. Uh, again, these analytics will give you uh, answers to different, different questions, like, you know, who are the experts in given topic, uh, which are the potential journals where I can publish my work, you know, like if you are publishing one journal, uh, a topic something like history of art then this is your journal of art uh, historiography this will be the best journals if you can publish if you can't publish in the top journal then you you know uh, slide down you go to some other journals so uh, this uh, filters uh, these analytics will give you again uh, answers to a lot of questions that you need to formulate and if you have the right question uh, it doesn't matter what answer you, you have, but I would say that if you have the right question, if you ask the right question, uh, you are halfway there uh, to your success. So with that, uh, I'll conclude uh, my speech. Uh, I can go on and on, but then most of you are since no, researchers, uh, but I think it is better if I give the forum back to the uh, scholars. So... If there is any question, uh, I'll try and answer them. May I request to the all participants, if any question regarding the session, you may ask. Feel free to ask regarding the new platform, regarding the new feature. And please download that application, OK? <laughs> Let us know how the application feels. It's uh, there in the. Uh, Play Store and iOS, it's called JGate only, J hyphen gate. It's uh, same exactly that. Uh, uh, but you need that ID password uh, that you need to collect from the library department. Okay. Uh, they'll help you on that part. But you can use it. The application is very uh, simple. Yeah, basically, I think. I think basically, no, I think. Regarding the login credential, to please. Login credential. And what are the login credentials for this? No, no. Uh, I didn't get the question, sir. Uh, sir, I'm teaching Russian language. So, uh, I was asking the login credential about this platform and can we use JGate for finding journals also for in foreign language and uh, related to subject like painting, history of arts, and all this? Like, she's also doing from. Okay, so uh, with respect to your first question, the login credentials, uh, if you are using the mobile application and if you are using your own network, uh, Vodafone, Geo, or Airtel, then you need an ID password. If you do not have that, uh, 
usually there is a provision actually that we can register okay now how do you register uh, for the first time you have to let me share my screen and uh, i can show you uh, you have to do one time registration in this uh, there is a uh, method actually just a second uh, so first you need to go to the library okay you log in into jgate next uh, you will come up to a page where at the top it will say Vishabharat University with the logo and everything. Okay. Now, when you are on this page, you need to click at this drop down. At the drop down, it says this sign up option will be there. Once you click on this sign up, you can do a registration. It says register to access your personal library. So, you put your first name, last name, your email ID, your mobile, password, user type, you select student. Library ID is not mandatory. So then you create your account. Now the email that you put, make sure that email is a proper email. Now this email you can use when you download that mobile application, you can use this email and this password that you have set as your user ID and password in order to get into the mobile application. But if you are there in the ID, uh, IP, then you won't be needing anything. It will uh, be authenticated through the registered IP only. But in case if you are not there in the campus or there is also provision of Shivolet. Uh, I do not know if uh, we have that uh, at Vishwabharati, but you can check if the Shivolet is there, uh, then you can also get that one. So uh, many provisions are there. So one of them is this uh, sign up uh, through your email ID and you can use this email ID and password in order to log in into JGate mobile app. Okay. Now, to answer your second question, that uh, subject pertaining to uh, fine arts, uh, yes, uh, JGate covers all the domain, all the branches, whether it's arts, uh, commerce, science, uh, all the branches are covered. So, yes, you it's, will... it's a product of ESL, Ishod Sindhu. So, all the subjects yes. are covered. Uh, the numbers might vary, okay. Maybe in biology they have five. Maybe I'm just giving you an example, okay. Don't think the five as I'm just saying. Uh, in biology, maybe there are five, uh, in uh, physiology, it might be three, something like that. But then mm, titles all are covered, that's for sure. Uh, you can also use that uh, meeting chat room in case if you have any question. You can also post it there. I think we can take uh, uh, questions from there if you have any doubts or any questions. So existing, uh, Mandraji. Ha, sir. So new uh, new version already started. So existing credential already uh, remain unchanged in case of the new platform. Uh, the uh, I, they all will get sir email. If they check their email, uh, if, if the ID or ID will not change actually, uh, maybe the password uh, got changed when uh, they migrated from JGate Plus to JGate Next. But uh, uh, they can check their email, sir. The information will be there. And in case if any of you, I mean, have lost your password, you can always reset. That option is always there. You just go to the login page at the bottom. There is an option called reset password. So just uh, try that. It will You can easily reset. So password will not be a concern. If it has changed, good. If you have got the mail or maybe you got the mail, you did not notice. So don't have to worry about all those things. Just change your password. <laughs> So one question from the chat box. Yes, sir. Sir, how can we request to access full length of research paper through JK? Monisa Rao, PSB Department of Agronomy. This so, yes, yes. So let me. If you take, 
any topic uh, you search sorry you take any topic you first uh, search okay now once you have the search result so you can see how many title like in the, in case of machine learning you can see you have 436000 total number of uh, research papers out of which 248000 full text now in your case it will be more actually because i'm using mine so the numbers will be less and the moment you look at it the one which are green you can download the full text if it is red that means you cannot download you only have access in the app like this one see it says subscription required so from the page itself you will get the indication whether you can download the full text or not earlier it was difficult earlier you had to open and then check but now at the top on the i mean uh, first page itself you have the indicator whether you can download the full pdf or not so if you want to download the full pdf just click on this full tabs it will uh, you know uh, help you to download the full pdf Uh, was that helpful? Uh, was I able to answer the question? Because uh, the new yes, uh, JK class. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. There are there, there are so many added features too, also. Yes, bunch of analytics we have added the indexing. So, uh, my, my 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 observation: How many years long back informatics changed? The old version to the one <laughs> because we are habituated to the earlier version and yes. long, long uh, more than 20 years hopefully. <laughs> yes, uh, true, very true, sir. It's the first time actually they have made few other changes will be there in next uh, one or two months. They are working on a global thesis uh, repository. So the existing thesis they are coming from Shodhganga and Krishikosh, which is for agriculture. But now they are working on this. Uh, mm, yes, so they'll have all the global pieces that are in open access. You will have access. Yes, now you have a lot of preprint titles as well, sir. A preprint is new, definitely. Uh, uh, but I'm uh, saying that uh, the thesis and dissertation will also change in next one month. We are already working on it. We just need to make few more changes. Uh, then this thesis and dissertation, it will become global thesis and dissertation. So all the major universities, whether it's Oxford, Cambridge, Anuraji, Howard. Yes, sir. So regarding the thesis and dissertation, so thesis including the South Ganga. Yes. And case of the dissertation, the coverages of dissertation. Uh, dissertation, sir, these are all coming from South Ganga only and Krishi Kosh. Okay, basically, uh, the uh, coverage uh, is mainly thesis, no dissertation. Hopefully, dissertation uh, from the other sources. Uh, no, dissertation also you have under Shodh Ganga. So, whatever material is there, uh, we are exporting that only from Shodh Ganga. Oh, from the dissertation. Huh, so, in Shodh Ganga, you also have dissertations. Sir. Books, chapters are also there, but we are not putting that. Uh, because then uh, if you do that, it will actually render the whole purpose of database, scholarly database, this term, uh, I would say, uh, null and void. So they are not going for book chapters and all this. They will keep it within the journal article, thesis and dissertation and preprint. So there are no such question from the participants point of view so uh, thanks a lot uh, mahendra ji so always uh, a pleasure sir for, for your such kind of uh, hands on uh, very simple user friendly demonstration on new jagat platform so so going to close this particular today's session may i request dr shavad naushin coordinator of this particular four days program for word of thanks ma'am please Thank mm -hmm.
thank you mahendra sir for such a nice presentation i think our no, no, scholar online no, no. and uh, online both have uh, they have gained a lot of knowledge and uh, they will use the way it plus thank you thank you uh, i would like to thank our university librarian for organizing such a program for uh, thank you everyone from our technical staff our scholar and team and thank you everyone online participants that closing thank you thank you sir thank you ma'am